We take time to remember Victory in Europe Day, VE Day, on May 8. In 1945, that day marked Allied victory over Germany. The official signing of Germany's surrender was soon met with joyful celebration by Allied warriors. At the 390th Bomb Group, an 8th Air Force B-17 outfit in England, members of the photography unit posed on jeeps, raising copies of Stars and Stripes proclaiming the victory. And mascot Mabel, the calico cat, got in on the act, on the lap of combat photographer Jerry Cole, who often crawled into the ball turret of a B-17 to achieve striking combat photos. It had been just over 11 months since the Allied landings at Normandy. As the summer of 1944 turned into autumn, the actual end of hostilities in Europe was still not a foregone conclusion. In the global war, much attention focused on Allied armies racing across Western Europe with unprecedented close air support in the last half of 1944 and until victory in 1945. Take a look at imagery, much of it from 9th Air Force sources in that last year of warfare on continental Europe as we remember those who contributed to that victory. The initial beachhead established in June 1944 needed to expand and this involved army units pushing south and west to gain even more coastline before swinging east. The Allies clearly established air superiority over the continental battlefields as armor and infantry began their push toward Berlin. American military convoys enjoyed greater freedom of movement. German trucks and trains were targeted relentlessly. Allied interdiction actions included an orchestrated bombing of bridges to obstruct train and highway travel for German forces. This made it much more difficult for the German army to resupply and reinforce its embattled troops in the Normandy area. But the bridge bombing was planned and timed to give the Allies some means of crossing important rivers as they pushed eastward through France. The chaos inflicted upon German transportation in the period following D-Day meant much longer transit times than normal. Gaps in railroad tracks led to the removal of troops and supplies on one side of the blockage and tedious reloading on another train on the other side. German troops used any means available to get to the front, including bicycles. German tanks, which were wonders on the battlefield, were not designed for long over-the-road transit just to get to battle. When tanks had to depart trains and run for many miles over roads made hazardous by the debris of constant bombing, they wore out more quickly. In so many ways, the fighting on the continent was a war of supply and attrition. The Allies had more of everything. The push through France brought about a great cooperative effort between U.S. Army ground commanders and 9th Air Force fighter-bomber units. Radio-equipped air support parties from 9th Air Force rode with the tanks. Escorting fighter-bombers that performed armored column cover received up-to-the-minute targeting direction from the tanks. The scouting aircraft could report situations not visible to the tanks.
The race across France was going well, and it caused 9th Air Force units to uproot and relocate closer to the moving fighting front frequently to maintain their best utility to the Army. By 9 August 1944, all 18 of 9th Air Force's fighter-bomber units had moved from England to France. The units would continue to move closer to the front, some groups taking up new residences as often as four or five times by September. Toward the end of August, medium bombers began operations from Normandy bases. The use of invasion stripes, alternating bands of black and white to identify low-flying Allied aircraft quickly, evolved over the summer of 1944. On D-Day, the stripes wrapped around the aft fuselage and over the tops and bottoms of the wings of aircraft, expected to fly at lower altitudes. Around July, the upper surface invasion stripes were ordered removed, sometimes leaving a blotchy ghost. By September, stripes were being removed from the lower surfaces of wings, leaving only the lower fuselage striping intact. On 25 August 1944, Paris was occupied by an Allied army with free French elements conspicuously present. Less well known was the claiming of the Eiffel Tower by 9th Air Force radio technicians. It was an important relay in communications to support the tactical air war. The rapid race across France and into Germany saw the Allies capture German equipment, ranging from vehicles to drop tanks. With a little GI ingenuity, the German tanks could be used by 9th Air Force P-47 Thunderbolts. The road to Germany was not without obstacles. When the ancient city of Aachen had a viaduct blown up by the Germans, an American Sherman tank dozer broke through a railway station to provide access for armor into the besieged city. The march into Germany was relentless but not uncontested. The front lines remained so fluid that teams sent out to claim German aircraft on recently abandoned airfields rushed to overpaint the German markings with American stars, lest marauding 9th Air Force fighters might strafe the aircraft, thinking they were still in the hands of the enemy. In early May, with parts of the Netherlands still occupied by Germany, a truce was arranged because Dutch civilians were in danger of starvation. Operation Chowhound saw 8th Air Force B-17s drop 4,000 tons of food in this unusual humanitarian wartime effort. In March 1945, Army Air Force's leaders discussed placing many warplanes in or around Germany in peace, in part to underscore the finality and totality of the Allied victory. Ultimately, fields of B-17s, some brand new, joined American fighters and medium bombers in a huge salvage operation. After examples were collected for study, fields of German aircraft were quickly scrapped, 
often by German labor, sometimes at gunpoint. The aircraft of Victor and Vanquished were scrapped in Germany after VE Day. <laughs> 